you've got questions, well, we have the man to answer those questions, Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of <laughs> See What I Have Here. That's my nice. Hammer. That's a quality <laughs> hammer right there, my friend. <laughs> this is an antique. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about me like that. <laughs> well, guess what? I have some questions for you. And the first one goes like this. We are hearing a few conflicting answers when it comes to superfunding a 529 plan and what the gift tax return 709 filing requirement is. If, for example, in 2023, a client and his wife each contribute $17,000 or $34,000 combined to equal the five-year exclusion of $170,000, is the requirement to file Form 709 one time for the 2023 tax year, or do they need to file one each year for five years? It's a great question. And before we get into the answer, let's just make sure everyone knows what we're talking about here. So 529 plans, obviously, the education savings account of choice for most Americans today if they're looking to save for college or other higher education expenses. But when you put money into that account, especially for a child, it, it is a gift. You're giving money to your child. And there are some limits around gifting. Now, we won't go into every little detail here, but suffice it to say, every year you get something called an annual exclusion amount. And that's the amount that you can give to any one person each year without having to worry about anything. There's no taxes. More importantly, there's no reporting of that gift. So for 2024, that's 18,000. For last year, it was $17,000. So normally that means if you give more than $17,000 last year or $18,000 this year, that you have to file a gift tax return. Now, typically there won't be a tax bill associated with it because you also get a large lifetime exemption on top of your annual exclusion amount, but it means filing some very annoying paperwork uh, in the form of a gift tax return. Now, for education purposes, if you're looking to fund a 529 account, what you're actually able to do is you're able to front load up to five years worth of those annual gifts. So. This year, let's call it $18,000 for 2024. Five times $18,000 is $90,000. So what someone could do is they could put $90,000 in today and have it treated as though it was made $18,000 this year, $18,000 next year, and each of the following three years after that. So spread out, treated as though it was spread out and paid in over five years, but really put in at one time in the beginning. Now. All of that said, in answer to our listener's question, how many times does that gift tax return have to be filed? The answer is potentially only once. You file the form in the year you make, in our example, the $90,000 contribution. You check a little box that says, treat this as though it was made and spread out over five years. And that's it, as long as you don't go ahead and make any more gifts next year or the year after or the year after that. If you make additional gifts and you go over the annual gift tax exclusion, let's say for 2025, for argument's sake, let's say $5,000 was gifted to that same child the next year. Well, $5,000 plus the 18 that we're treating as being paid in next year is 23. That's over the limit. Now we've got to file a gift tax return because it's impacting our lifetime exemption. So long story short, if you make the five-year gift now and you stop putting anything else in, you file the form once. If you make the gift now and you decide to continue to gift more to that child in the coming years, it could necessitate filing that gift tax return form 709 each year. Hmm. So Jeffrey, given the paperwork requirement, uh, is there any reason to super fund an account versus putting in the money annually? Yeah, sure. So the biggest reason would be if you get money in sooner, you have more years of tax deferred. And in the case of a 529 plan, if the funds are used for education purposes, tax free growth. Right. So if you think about five years ago where the market was and then today, you know, hopefully and not every time, but hopefully it'll be higher than it was five years ago. You will have earned more by starting to make those contributions sooner. So that's usually the reason that people choose to super fund those accounts early on is again, just more years of tax deferred or tax free if it's used for the right expenses growth. All right, and then in terms of super funding, let's mm -hmm. assume that you had 10 grandchildren and you had the means to super mm -hmm. fund each of those grandchildren's 529 plan. There's no restriction on not doing that. Is that correct? 
That's exactly right. You could the, the annual gift tax exclusion is a per person, the donor, per donee limit each year. So let's say, Bob, you wanted to be really nice. You could give me $18,000 this year without any issue whatsoever. Now, if you wanted to, Bob, I, I am married. You could also give my wife $18,000. And I have three children. You could give each of them $18,000 as well. Now, I'm just saying this as an example, you know, no, no, uh, no requirements here, but you could do that. Now, theoretically, if you wanted to fund a 529 plan for each of us, you could put in $90,000 for each of us, choose to gift tax average that or gift average that out over the five years, and none of that would use any of your lifetime exclusion amount. Now, it is worth pointing out one more thing, Bob. We keep talking about this lifetime exclusion amount as if it's a terrible thing to use. For most people, it doesn't matter, right? The gift, that annual gift tax exclusion is most important for those who may have a future estate tax liability. Right now, if you go over that annual amount, let's say $18,000 this year, you start to eat into your lifetime amount. This year, the lifetime amount is more than $13.5 million per person. If nothing happens, it's set to go back to half of that in 2026, but that still means most individuals can give $18,000 this year, plus another $6.5 million if they go back to the lower level without any sort of tax consequence other than having to file some paperwork with the IRS. All right. Well, I'm about to send you some checks. Um, actually, I'm just kidding. But that, you are no, That's a verbal contract, my friend. That's uh, <laughs> That is already that's done. That's fair. You are the gift that keeps on giving, Jeffrey. That's, that's all well, I have to say. <laughs> I appreciate it. And if our listeners would like to give us a gift, send us some questions. Give it to us in our email box which is askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And we'll do our best to send you your answers right away and not spread them out over five years.